Hello, everybody. Mark Palermo here with the Lawrence History Project. And I'm here with my co-host, Tom Delisle. And uh, this is episode eight. And by the way, if you're watching this on Haverhill Community um, uh, Access, Gable Access, uh, you can also access these on YouTube. Just go to just uh, go to YouTube and enter in Lawrence History Project, and it should come right up. Okay, so uh, Tom, I will just talk a little bit about Tom in case you are all interested. I'm sure you are. Tom is a photographer and a chronicler of things Lawrence. And uh, it's a pleasure to have you here with us today, Tom. Thank you. Enjoy being here. Well, we're going to be showing, oh, and by the way, thanks to the Lawrence Historical Archives for permission to use some of their photos. Well, some of the stuff is Tom's stuff, and we're mixing it in with archival photos. So what do you think? You ready, Tom? Yeah. No Let's further let ado. it go. OK. Well, this is Ralph Fascinella. And uh, Fascinella is kind of famous. He's kind of a Woody Guthrie type character, actually. Um, probably even more so than Woody Guthrie is, because Fascinella is a real deal. He uh, was a son of Italian immigrants, grew up in the Bronx. His mother was a seamstress, father was a uh, ice man. And uh, he grew up rough and hard. And uh, he grew up with a, uh, a real feeling for social justice and the sticking up for the little guy. Uh, later on, he became a union organizer, went to <clears throat> fight in the Spanish Civil War. When he came back, uh, he got interested in art. And he has quite a lot of um, works dedicated to just working people. And he came to Lawrence and did three, uh, three, three um uh, pictures about Lawrence, and the one you saw was just one of them. And one of them was dedicated to the strike of 1912. Um, Fascinella's work was also hung in the uh, Rayburn Building of Congress for several years. And um, uh, anyway, we'll probably, I would like to maybe do a, uh, a, a, a devote an entire program to Fascinella's work sometime. Yeah, this. Are, are you familiar with his work, Tom? Not as familiar as I should be. Yeah, yeah, me but too. But it's, it's yeah. interesting. The strike was 1912. Civil of uh, the Spanish Civil War got over in 39, so it took all that time for someone mm -hmm. to, in a sense, to memorialize it. I think Hoppers, you know, had illustrations. Yeah, yeah. But to do um, murals, and that looked like the Everett Mill, the um, the little oh, the shot yeah. next to yeah, the. Um, yeah. His, yeah. his portrait there. For a but while. Good though, for him. For, for a while, for he, was, he was kind of disappointed towards the end of his life because he, he thought the union <clears throat> movement would do better than it, it did. But as we saw in the 90s, uh, passage of NAFTA, for example, mm -hmm. uh, shipping all of these jobs overseas, um, it uh, <clears throat> it's sort of take, took away a lot of the power of unions. Like my father, my father was in management all his life, and uh, he told me like back in the '60s, '70s mm -hmm. even, um, unions ran the com country. If you wanted to be president, you have to, you had to deal with the unions. <clears throat> the cost of doing business. Yeah, yeah, not so much anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, they've been weakened quite a lot. I remember that my mother was uh, an LPN at mm -hmm. the the old Bon Secours when it yeah. was the Bon Secours, and. Um, Again, the nuns were in charge, and there was talk about unionizing the nurses there. And I remember the the nurse, the head nurses, nurse managers, we used to call them head nurses, had to put down the people they thought would vote for a union. And, and just, you know, they wanted to keep that control on it. And it never did become union. I don't, yeah. To this day, I don't think it is. Do you remember? Did they fire them? Or? They didn't fire them, but it was um, it was known mm -hmm. that if you vote for it, we will be aware of it. Yeah, and it never came to to yeah. anything. And you'll get the worst shifts. You'll find yourself on the weekend shift probably mm -hmm. for the rest of your career. Yeah, and never advance. I'm sure. Yeah, it's something like that. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Ralph Fasanella, and probably a subject for a future program. Okay, Cassie, we'll see, see what's next here. Oh, yes, this is 
Classic Woolworths. Classic Woolworths, 25 cent hot dogs. They had a F.W. Woolworths. The building is still there. It's in Lawrence. It's at the corner of Hampshire and Lawrence, I believe. Mm, Essex. Ha- ha- Hampshire yeah. and Essex. Yes, mm-hmm. that's right. The building is still there. Yeah. It's been repurposed. But this is a classic scene. If you came of age in the 50s, as we did, probably every town of any size had a Woolworths. And it looked just like this. They had a lunch counter that looked just like this. Mm-hmm. And it was a precursor for the larger chain stores like uh, Walmarts, Kmarts, and so forth. Um, you know, I, I, stores got bigger and bigger as time went on. And, and the buying power of a place like Walmart, you couldn't run a Wool, Wool, Woolworths anymore, a chain store. with, But, uh, but uh, so the small department stores really went out. Uh, they were long gone. But that's a classic picture, huh? Classic, great. yeah. I, that may be one from the uh, Tribune, a lot of great mm-hmm. Tribune photographers oh, yeah, possible. Yeah. And I know on Exeter, on Main Street, there was a, a Woolworths that wasn't as large as the one in Lawrence, mm-hmm. but there were still beads, like, like a little mosaic, F.W. Oh, Woolworth, yeah. in the sidewalk in Exeter to this day, which is a nice, um, nice reminder of that I'm, era. I'm pretty sure they had one in, in uh, Haverhill here. And... Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I, I don't remember where there was one. Well, let me show you. I think it was at the corner. They have a new building there. Mm-hmm. There was an old, yeah, it was. Oh, right by the bridge. Right by the bridge. Yes, the old, uh, yes, Deco that was a Woolworths. Building. They tried to keep it for years. They tried, it, was, it was empty for like 30 years. They're just trying to, trying to figure out what to do with it. Eventually, they just knocked it down a couple of years ago and they built mm-hmm. that high rise. Yeah. Uh, Lowell had one. The building is still there. They've repurposed that. There was one right downtown on Merrimack Street in Lowell. Every town had a Every w- town had a Woolworths. Woolworths. F.W. Woolworths. Just as they had a 5 and 10. Mm-hmm. The 5 and 10 gave, ba- gave way to Kmart. Mm-hmm. And K- Kmart gave way to the big K. Yeah, it's that? the Kresge's. Kresge's, Kresge's, in, right. Kresge's in Lawrence yes. on Essex Street. Yes. Cresham Grants. Yeah. K. And then Bradford. Was it Bradley's? Bradley's, did, did yeah. Bradley's come before or after Kmart? I think it was. Yeah, I, I, I think I after. after. I think after, yeah. Mm-hmm. It was an interesting concept, a five and ten cents. You go in the store, and originally everything was five cents. Then with inflation, they made it, everything is five and ten, five and ten cent store. Mm-hmm. So they, they just shortened it to call the five and ten. Oh, I bought them at the five and ten. Right. And eventually, the five and ten gave way to cheap stuff. Not quite dollar store stuff, but I remember my mother bought me a couple of parakeets mm-hmm. in Woolworths, 50 cents each. Yeah, 50 cents. For a buck, two <laughs> parakeets. I kept them for years. Mm-hmm. Um, parakeets, imagine that. Because those stores, Grants and Woolworths, both had the downstairs. Mm-hmm. And I remember the, the parakeets oh, right. and the fish yeah, at yeah. Grants were down. And I think the um, in Woolworths, they were downstairs. What's well, an old but, marketing idea when you come to think of it? Uh, the dollar store. That's what a dollar store is. Every going in, everything is a dollar. Mm-hmm. Of course, they've gone to a dollar twenty-five now. Right. Yes. Dollar twenty-five store. But mm-hmm. still, it's it's it's. You can still get bargains in a dollar store. I like I like going into dollar stores. To tell you the truth. Yeah. So, st- some of the stuff is outrageous junk, but every once in a while you get something. And I can't believe <laughs> this is a dollar, and you load right. up on them. Mm-hmm. Can of salmon or something for a buck. Uh, you know. Dollar store. So it's a really very old idea. Next, please. Oh, great Italian food. Yes. Ritzy's. Ritzy's. Right downtown Essex, on Essex Street. Essex Street, um, across from the Essex Company. That's the right. The archives. Yeah, yeah. You know, I think Little Town Targary used to be around there before they moved. And um, some of the old homeboys, Sal. Sell them with Judge Stella. Sell's gone. Judge is still around. They'd get money for the donation, the, the basket at Holy Rosary, and uh, they'd spend it at St. Ritzy's <laughs> for coffee and a, a sandwich. <laughs> you could get a coffee and sandwich at St. Ritzy's. And it wasn't big, as you could tell. You know, just <laughs> No, it was long. It was long, though. Yeah. It's not big in the front, but it's long. Yeah. Uh, it was an Italian, Italian guy that ran it. Yeah. It just died about 10 years ago. There's a great remember. picture in the Tribune from the archives of him. We'll have to try to get that up oh, there really? sometime. Yeah yeah. 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 
Um, you know, the food was good. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, just, see, the place was a dump, but really good food, freshly prepared. Mm -hmm. You know, nothing from a can. It's oh, no. unthinkable. unthinkable. Sure, I know how to cook. Yeah, you know, it's one of my pet, pet peeves. I go into a go into a restaurant, you order soup, and it's, they serve you soup from a can. It's really disgusting, mm -hmm. isn't it? Soup is not hard to make. No. Or 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 you go to a restaurant, you order French fries, and they're from frozen. You know, or even seafood. You go down to the beach, mm -hmm. you order seafood. You pay thirty bucks, thirty five bucks for a plate of for a seafood special, mm -hmm. and it's frozen French frozen. fries. Yeah. You know, if you go to Vermont, one thing about Vermont, if you go to a restaurant, a little small restaurant in Vermont, you order French fries. They have the machine right there. They take a, a potato, they put it in this machine and put a, push a lever and out comes the raw French fries. Right. They take them and just put them in a fryer later. Let's see that. Real every, time. Every, every French fries in real time. Now, if they can do that in Vermont, why can't they do that around here? People, right. Well, people put up with it, mm -hmm. but it's really one of my pet peeves. If I have French fries at all, they're not very good for my heart. I want to make sure I'm having good French fries. Exactly. Not this crap mm -hmm. that's been shipped in from God knows where. Mm -hmm. Maybe even grown in China. Who knows? Oh, anyway, I'm just I'm just being an old <laughs> fart here. Let's go. Let's go to the next one, please. Oh yes, this is a Russian church. You said. Yeah, off of Park Street. Um, I forget the side street. Mm -hmm. You said Barcelos was there for a while. There's an hour. Uh, it was Hispanic up a few streets street. from Tuts. From Tuts, Tuts. Yeah, yeah, up going towards Park Street, up from um, from Hampshire. And it was it was. I don't think I ever saw it open, but it was so different from any other building in that area. I mean, the Russian Orthodox Church. You know, East, that that used to be the Eastern European area. That enclave. Russians and Polish and mm -hmm. Lithuanians. They all settle in that area, mm -hmm. Park Street. So and that may not even be, that could be Eastern Orthodox, but not necessarily Russian. That's right, yeah. Could be Latvian, yeah, yeah. Um, Lithuanian. You know, they, if anybody they, knows. They, uh, I don't know if anybody out there believes in ghosts, but they knocked that down. Mm -hmm. I guess they waited till everybody was dead mm -hmm. and nobody would complain. They knocked it down and somebody built a couple of duplexes over it. And they had a cemetery there, too. Did you notice yeah, that? Yeah, that's a small, small so area in the I, back. I, knowing Lawrence, I don't think they paid to have those graves transferred. Most likely not. Plow them over. Mm -hmm. If you get things that go bump in the night and you live in there, uh, that's probably what it is. Not such a good idea to disturb the dead. No. I wouldn't want to be living. I mean, I'm not a big believer in ghosts. I'm a kind of part-time believer in God. Once you see one, you'll be a believer. Mm -hmm. um, remember working at the Burke. Yes. The, oh, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well. That's a story for another time. I don't want to go into ghost stories, but as I say, if you see one, it makes a believer out of you. Uh, next, please. Oh, yes. And the same, same neighborhood. Same neighborhood. Next street off, I think. This is the Sunkissed Bakery. And you, to step in here is to step into Eastern Europe. Absolutely. It's the first thing you see, big sacks of flour. Mm -hmm. And then there's a little vestibule. And then you walk in a little further. And there's a big room with enameled bricks. And way in the back, there's these Eastern European guys putting... Um, putting loaves of bread into a brick oven. Yeah, it, it takes up the whole back of the building. Yeah, the these long uh, sticks. What are they called? The, yeah, like there's spatula a spatula type them, things. Yeah, I, I don't mm -hmm. know what they call them. Uh, but that was a trip into Eastern Europe. Old school. Yeah. yeah. It was old. Even if, back then, it was yeah. it was old school. Yeah, yeah. I remember the women were wearing kerchiefs and babushkas and everything. Mm -hmm. And that, that held on for quite a long time. That mm -hmm. held on right up until the probably... I would say 90s. Mm -hmm. um, I'd say I'd say 90s. It's gone now. I don't know if the building is still there. Is it still there? Do you know? No, it's um, Homes, I think. I, I went oh, by it, it a yeah. few months yeah. ago. Yeah. I, was, I was walking that neighborhood, mm -hmm. and I remember where the footprint was. Oh, yeah. There's, a, there's another another house now. I don't know if they knocked it down or... Um, they had two kinds of bread. One, light, light rye and a dark rye. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
I have one of my grandmothers was a Lithuanian, and I remember you know, she died when I was twelve. But I remember she make black bread. Oh my God, this is better than steak or anything. I'd put to take it right out of the oven. It weighed about two pounds. Oh yeah. Yeah. And slice it up and put tons of butter in it, or lard even, lard, mm -hmm. and give it to me. And it's delicious. I mm -hmm. still remember it to this day. Uh, black bread. I think um, people of uh, Russian and Polish, uh, Lithuania, I think if they want that stuff, they have to go into Boston now. Probably. There, there are large enclaves of Russian, Polish neighborhoods that you can get it, but I don't think you can get it around here now anymore. No. But that, that stuff was good. I used to get it all the oh. time. And yeah. if you toasted it, oh, it was toast. the, the oh, best. Oh, my God. The I get the dark rye. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. So good. Yeah. Oh, I'm getting hungry. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Next, please. No, that's one of yours, that, is That's it? one of my. That's from the, um, the Lido Barber Shop on Union Street, across from Fisichelli's. Uh, obviously, no longer there. Mm. Um, but that was... I. I I like barber shops and diners and gas stations, and it was it was a man's hangout. Nowadays, in in Lawrence, currently, more barber shops I think than there's ever been in the city of Lawrence. So this is a tradition that goes back, yeah, forever. This is probably this was taken early '70s, but again, there were some other shots I had taken when I took this one. And the men in there were, were dressed in suits and hats. It looked like something out of the 40s. Yeah, These yeah, were elderly men. Yeah. And it was a real, it, it was a male enclave. Well, you know, even in Italy now, you'll see older men and women, they dress up. Mm -hmm. Pe people in Europe, people are much well, better dressed than we Americans are. We, we dress like bums. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. The whole thing looks like a, people from Walmart. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Everybody. Everybody. Even Hollywood stars, they wear jeans with holes in them and dress like bums. Um, I'm sounding like my father. <laughs> I'm channeling my dad, please. Um, but uh, yeah, in Italy, mm -hmm. uh, people, people still are well-dressed. They take pride mm -hmm. in their appearance. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's, 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 you know, like my wife says, sometimes I'll wear clothes. She'll say, what are you wearing that rag for? You still think you're 19? Mm -hmm. She said, you would have looked good in that when you were 19. Right. It's got holes in it. It's worn. It's jeans that are worn out. She said, you look like an old homeless guy that's just, they let out from the psychiatric hospital for the weekend. Mm -hmm. she says, it's, you know, it's useful to have some, to right, live feedback. with somebody who can tell you, wait yeah. a minute. You know, I, I, you know, I told her something last week. Mm -hmm. I said, you're not going out the door dressed like that. What? I'm trying, no, you're not. And she got mad. Of course, women, they get mad. Oh, you yeah. tell them like that. I tell her anyway, I said, look. No, we get mad, uh, they get even. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to tell you, you look ravishing. You're, you're dressed perfectly all the time. Mm -hmm. I said, you want me to tell you the truth. Right. I said, I'm telling you the truth. Mm -hmm. Well, she was still had her feathers ruffled about it. Mm -hmm. But it's good to live with somebody who can tell you, wait a minute, you're not going out the door dressed like that. <laughs> Keep you in a shot leash. <laughs> yeah. You know, when you're old, you have to dress a little, you know, you have with a little age, age with a little appropriate. Yeah, we, have to, yeah. we have to be more age appropriate yeah. than we sometimes. And you know, are. if you don't, you you, you more. I, I find that you're more uh, open to abuse mm -hmm. from from people. You know, they look at you and they say, "Oh my God, he's." A, take for example, somebody said to me this. He said, "You know what? I um, I was working on my car." Mm -hmm. I was changing oil and I had grease all over me. I had my oldest clothes. And I remember I had to go to the I had to go to the store to get a part. Now you're gonna go in the house, take a shower, change in the middle of work and you go, no, you go. Mm -hmm. You're covered with grease, you you know. And uh he said, Wow, people looking at me like, Oh my god, I'm ready to call security. Who is this guy? Right. That's the look you get from people. Mm -hmm. Why invite? There's enough people that will abuse you in the world anyway. Enough jerks. Why invite? Them? Why invite them? So I, I, I had to agree. When you're older, you have to pay a little bit more attention to your dress because stuff that you could get away with when you're 20, you can't do that when you're 70. Oh too. no, no, you can't. And it's yeah. like there's no fool like an old fool. Yeah. You, you don't want to have that look. No, you don't want to have that look. No, no. 
you're the same person. People, sh- it shouldn't. It's not right. People shouldn't shouldn't judge you on your appearance, but everybody does, including everybody us. Does. Yeah. Again, I'm channeling my father again. I don't know what it is, <laughs> Dad. Anyway, uh, well, you know what? I, I, when I see the way the kids are fathered nowadays, I. I, I was, he used to piss me off, but I'd kiss his hand if he were here. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Uh, anyway, next, please. Another b- bunch of tenements that were slated for destruction. Yes, this is... Um, City of Lawrence did a very good job mm-hmm. prior to urban renewal. This was taken, I think, um, by the city in the late 60s. All the neighborhoods, have fr- uh, front and back, that they were knocking down and this is um, the Everett Mill, looking at um, the houses from the back, um, probably from like a, a two or three de- tenement, two or three um, floor. Oh yeah, Decker, looking towards the, the backyards, and they mm-hmm. had numbers. They had front mm-hmm. front views, mm-hmm. back views, even the alleys. There were so many alleys or passageways. Right. They'd call it in Lawrence, and they they did a very good job documenting them. And you see yeah. how they really needed to come down. It's it's, oh, yeah. it's sad, but there were fire traps. Um, oh my God! Yeah, very dangerous. <sighs> Thankfully, there was never a large fire. I don't think it would have been a. I yeah. Mean, in the eighties, we were the arson capital of America. Oh yeah. But um, prior to that, those houses they needed to go. Some some of them were, some of them were tinder boxes. Yeah. Just just waiting for a fire. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, it's it's scary. And you know, of course, when they built them too. I don't think the codes were very strong. Uh, if you know, they now, existed now, at now all. Nowadays, they have kind of fire stops and everything mm-hmm. that you have to build in the walls and stuff. And back in those days, they slapped them up real quick. Yeah. Yeah, scary. Yeah, I agree. Some of them had to go, but I wish they didn't take everything down piecemeal. I wish they could have been a little bit more selective. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because a lot of treasures were... They get oh. really into it for a while because I think that they were getting stipends and compensations from mm-hmm. knocking stuff down. They went uh, crazy. Havel, too. Havel, oh, my God. Oh, the yeah. city hall, the library, everything mm-hmm. went. They, uh, they, they did quite a job on downtown Havel. Yeah. And, and the Plains area in Lawrence, I, I happened to see uh, for the first time a few weeks ago with the archives, a map, and it was like it would be like clear-cutting a forest. Yeah, yeah. And they had a few blocks marked out, and everything was leveled. Oh, yeah. You know, in the Plains area. Yeah. Everything. And there were pockets of those. Mm-hmm. So whole swaths of entire neighborhoods went That's the way they used overnight. to do it. Yeah. yeah. And look at what they did in Boston in the West End. Uh, mm-hmm. They just gave them, a, I don't know, they just went around door to door. They said, you got like two months. Eminent domain. Yeah, you're out. And they just knocked everything down. It was beautiful. It was uh, gorgeous. Everything bricks, and they just knocked everything down, and um, and uh, they just replaced it with a couple of high rises. Uh, no public input, just from top down. Done deal. Yeah, it's a yeah. done deal. We, this is what we've decided. It was all politics, I believe. I believe it was driven by um, uh, developers mm-hmm. who really saw that as a big boom. Probably made a lot of money from it. It's too bad they could have kept that, though. Um, okay, next, please. That's from the archives. Right? Oh, yeah. Classic shot. Um, unidentified group, I think. Um, they have a few of them over there that are unidentified, but this is one of the classic shots at the archives. Um, I think they were, it's an Italian group, but I'm not 100% sure. Young people. Young, young people. They don't look particularly unhappy. No, no. They look like they're busy, and they have a sense of purpose. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that's a lot of them, a lot, lot of the immigrants yeah. making it over here was like winning the lottery, you know, prior oh, to the lottery yeah. back yeah. in the day, yeah. making it to America. And they made the best of it. Yeah, if you got a sense of purpose, you got a lot, a lot mm-hmm. going for you. Mm-hmm. That's what a lot of people are missing, young people are missing nowadays, struggling hard to find themselves. Yeah. Okay, next. Again, this unidentified uh, picture. Yeah, unidentified. Beautiful girls. Beautiful. Really uh, beautiful. I love the composition. Italian. They're Italian. young. Yeah, Italian. Yeah, I think they're Italians. Yeah. yeah. The one on the left is, yeah, she looks very Italian. Mm-hmm. A real beauty. And very young. 
Yeah. Yeah, and they, they could have been okay. working in the mills yeah. at that age. Oh, I know down oh, south sure. in the Carolinas. Twelve years old. There. Yeah. Twelve years old in the mills. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Yeah. They're small hands. I mean, they're yeah. it's happened in Pakistan that they're making the sewing up the, oh. the soccer balls for the world. Oh, I know. Because they can, you know, they have the smaller hands. Oh yeah. That has to Some be things that never has change. To be, that has to be addressed. That can't go on. Next, please, Cassie. Now, this is an example of what they call the poor man's opera. Have you ever heard poor of that? Poor man's opera, no. Well, the husband gets home mm -hmm. from what do they have in those days? No television, no automobile. No radio. No radio. And look, look at the poor woman. She's probably see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven kids, a result of the poor man. That's what they used to call mm -hmm. the poor man's opera. Poor man's opera. <laughs> <laughs> this is the result. Mm -hmm. I don't think they had any birth control in those days either. No, I don't think they had any self control in those <laughs> days. Well, that's right. I mean. Yeah. <laughs> the rich people, rich people, uh, poor people couldn't go to the opera, so they did that instead. They did, right. Mm -hmm. uh, and you can't blame them. Working all day, uh, working a 10 hour day on a, a machine, you get home and, well, there it is. Yeah. Uh, poor man's opera. Next, please. Pappy's Bakery. Pappy's and Capola's. Yep, okay. corner of um, Newberry. And a great big Cadillac there. Yeah. And that caddy, if you look, the white one, right coming through the, um, between the fr fr front seat and back seat, that small door, mm -hmm. that was a pool room. One of Lawrence's that, pool rooms. One of Lawrence's pool rooms. And um, I mean, the entrance was so small. And once you got inside there, yeah. it wasn't that much bigger. It was before our time, but I've yeah. seen photographs inside there. And I think there were two tables and not much room. Not Why much room. did Lawrence have so many pool rooms? Do you have any ideas on that? There were pool rooms just everywhere I, when we were kids. They were right, still around yeah. when we were young kids. Mm -hmm. uh, my, my theory is that, well, there's no TV. Well, there was. It, well, there was nothing on, really. There was no cable TV or anything. Mm -hmm. You didn't really center your life around TV. You had, but, you know, TV, TV uh, you're stuck in a mill job, you're living in an apartment, you want to get out. Mm -hmm. And I suppose that's where you go, to meet with your buddies. With, have a few yeah. beers and play some pool. Yeah, you have a it's not like baseball, we need a field. Yeah, yeah. You know, pools, you'd have to go to a public one. Kennedy's mm -hmm. a guy, so mm -hmm. you know, people didn't have pools. Forget tennis, you know, people didn't yeah. have money. So pool was, um, it was... Reasonable, you know. And it, I think it was around the Italian neighborhoods. Not, maybe it's an mm -hmm. Italian thing. It's a way of getting together with friends after work. Right. And having a few A beers. vehicle. It's a yeah. vehicle for getting yeah, together with right. the boys. That doesn't sound too bad, actually. I wouldn't mind that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wouldn't mind a place to go to get together with the guys. Okay, next, please. Tripoli's Bakery. You Tripoli's took this, right? Institute. No, I... I I made a copy. This is hanging in Tripoli's, the, the Lawrence one. Oh, yeah. Um, some of the family, the family members, um, the girl in the front, I forget her name. But great shot. I mean, Tripoli's is tremendous. As is Fisichelli's and Napoli's. Everybody misses Napoli's. But that's one of the, um, the anchors of the city. Yeah. The institution. Institution. Next, please. Now you don't you don't remember this, do you? I don't remember it. I, I guess don't from either. The archives. I um, don't either. Looking at the cars, I'd say we should remember it. Six, it mid like mid to late sixties, early seventies. Yeah, yeah. Again, on the corner of um, Common and Union, where Alfio's Villa is right now, the, the apartments, and around the corner is Stramundo's, you know, for a point of reference. Oh, yeah, and then yeah. the Lido, Barber, Lido Barbershop yeah. up the next block, Garden Street and Orchard Street. Chicken barbecue. That was really in style oh, in the yeah. 50s, huh? Mm -hmm. There was chicken barbecue places everywhere. Yep. Lawrence and Lowell, I remember. You don't see that too much anymore. No. Remember the old Tally Ho? The, oh, the yeah. bar? Mm -hmm. Famous for their chicken barbs. Chicken barbs. Really, chicken barbecue restaurants. Okay, next. Oh, uh, here we are, another pool hall. Yeah, pool hall. These guys don't look like they're up to any good. 
No. Especially no. the guy on the left here. Yeah. But it looks like a pretty tough character. Yes. Some, some of the, the, the Italian people I know, the older ones said that Carmen Street, it was mentioned to you, was um, one, one end was Neapolitan, the other end was Sicilian. And you, east is east and west is west. Is and unless you right? wanted to, to rumble, then you didn't the, cross. The, the, the old hood. Yeah. The lines the, the are hood. drawn in the old hood. The hood, yeah. Plula change. What do the French say? Plula change. The more things the more things change, change the, more the more they remain the same. The same. Mm-hmm. Nothing new under the sun. Even the Bible says it. Huh? Right. Yeah. Nothing new. <laughs> Next, please. What else have we got here? You took this, uh, right? You must have taken this. This is your style. Yeah, it's my st- style. Yeah. Um, I've, I've taken the house. I can't remember if this is mine because the archive has one. It's just uh-huh. such a unique house on Campo Seco Street, off of Prospect. Mm-hmm. Looks like something out of a, a Fellini set. But, um, yeah, that's I, there's no other house in Lawrence that looks like that house. This, you know, this is what I, uh, my, my gripe against modern architecture. It's so soulless and boring and sterile and mm-hmm. dull. I hate it. I absolutely hate it. Mm-hmm. But if you go back in time, the uniqueness of all these buildings, everything is unique. Um, it looks like everyone, you know, they just didn't make them cookie cutter style the way they did now, right. nowadays, tracked homes and every, even when they try to be unique, they're still sterile and, and soulless. Mm-hmm. Uh, all the ones on, in Urban Renewal, everyone was the work of one mind. Yeah. You know, and every one of those houses that yeah. they know, it was unique. You look at the pictures mm-hmm. front and back; it has the the build the signature on it, and they were yeah, yeah, they were the real deal. It's the creative force, mm-hmm. and uh, ever since post post World War II, we haven't put all that creative force that we could into our architecture. I don't know, maybe I don't know why. We probably could talk for hours on why it's so soulless and dull and boring, mm-hmm. but it is. It is. And there's nothing we're going to do about it anytime soon. I, I chose to live in a very unique house. Um, my house is like, every house I live in is, you know, unique. There's only one like it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the floors aren't even, you know, the basement's wet, but I love it. You know, it's just a... It's, it's your a, home. It's my home, and yeah. it's, a, it's very creative. My wife is right with me on this. It's mm-hmm. a creative stuff. Every... Every flower, every picture, everything we have is just just a, just a creative force, and I believe home should be like that. Okay, next. Do we have any more in here, in the can here? Oh. Oh yeah, this. You is, were there um, on the spot. Yeah, when they were knocking down St. Lawrence's Church. Oh boy. Um, and everybody said that footprint was so small. It is. It's amazing. It, it's, yeah. It's amazing how big that church looked. Looked. And how what a small footprint. Mm-hmm. It, it, it had, and now the, there's a small park there with the fountain, uh-huh. so it's 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 repurposed, getting um, getting yeah, some use. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Another one, please. Yeah, this is this and is heartbreaking, and when I look at this, I say, this is a result of the church not understanding something. Why could they not reach out? Why could they not communicate with people? Drug dealers can communicate with young. Mm-hmm. Uh, rock performers, people that sell them stuff can communicate them. And this, is, this represents a failure. But this is, everything's cyclical. Mm-hmm. And if you look at the history of the church, there's nothing new in that. The only, the only thing in the, in the old days, if they didn't agree with you or they didn't see you, uh, you didn't see things their way. They could burn you. Right. You know, the burnings. How the bad old days. Even sometimes from minor doctrinal differences, you can end up getting burned at the stake or your entire village. Um, so things are sickly. I think, myself, I think the church is, um, sometimes they can be so meaningful. Think of a Catholic church in Poland in like 1979 or 1980 mm-hmm. when the Soviets were crushing them. Uh, solidarity, mm-hmm. like Walenta and all Look, of that. Uh, yeah, it's a Talking tremendous about meaning. And then you see this, and you say, "What happened?" You know, I think they just got too cozy with the deep state, 
and they just get too cozy, and then they lose contact somehow. You know? Think about it. If you go back in time, you could have, before the fourth century, you could be thrown into the Colosseum and eaten by wild, covered in honey and eaten by wild animals, or otherwise killed or tortured for being a Christian. And after the fourth century, you could be killed for not being one. The church mm -hmm. co opted, co opted Christians, and the Romans incorporated the religion into the Roman Empire. Well, yeah, official state religion. I hope Go I'm not going to gonna anger anybody with my opinion. I'm being very opinionated here. I shouldn't be talking about religion or politics. My wife told me, don't talk about religion or politics, and here <laughs> I am. So I hope I haven't pissed anybody off. Mm -hmm. But um, anyway, just trying to discern that picture was so poignant of the church being knocked down. It made me wonder, what in the heck, what idea was missed? What did they miss? That shouldn't have happened. But it did. It was so, you can see it was so lovingly built. Mm -hmm. And what happened in between? That's probably grist for the mill or a subject for another day. Uh, let's have another one. Do we have any more? Oh, yeah, last one. Oh, and this is a nice looking church. Yeah, this it's is still there, isn't it? It's still there yeah. across the street. You could, you could throw a baseball from where St. Mm -hmm. Lawrence's used to be and hit this church. It um, used to be Armenian Orthodox. Now it's. Um, I think Spanish, I'm not sure which mm -hmm. denomination. Yeah. But I, I know the Armenian church, they built a big one up around the Ward Hill area, mm -hmm. you know, big complex up there. Um, but yeah, that's that's still standing. It's still standing. That's Yeah, you know, I've passed that a million times and I never noticed it. But mm -hmm. You, with your photographer's eye, picked right up on it. If you see it up close, uh, finer resolution, but you see the beautiful, beautiful brickwork. Oh, yeah. I mean, somebody just really, really lovingly crafted that building, as most of them were. Well, I think that brings us to a close today. Do mm -hmm. we have any more pictures? I think that's it. That was the do last we, one, I think. Do you have anything to add to our investigation of the old, of the old yes, <laughs> yesteryear? As one uh, old geezer to we another? All, one geezer, yeah, we go off on the tangents, but the, the back stories... They, they lead down roads that we don't know when we start talking where it's going to go. And that's sort of the, the idea of, um, of history, I, I guess. I think that's it. I think that's it. I, I think our talks were always spontaneous, mm -hmm. off the cuff. We're old friends. Yeah. We've known each other. By the way, Tom and I have known each other. We were in kindergarten together. And the figure was 72 minus 5, 67 years. So, um, yeah, we can, we're pretty relaxed with one another. So um, with that, I will bid you all adieu. Please remember, uh, if you're watching this on Haverhill Community Access TV and you'd like to see the whole, uh, the whole series, you go to YouTube. I don't have the exact YouTube address, but just go to YouTube and uh, put a search term in, Lawrence History Project. That's Lawrence History Project, and everything will come up. So friends out in... Uh, viewer land, we wish you all the best. Be well, everybody. Take care.